Hi everybody, it's Mr. Gerhardt again, and we're going to do another lesson here on polynomials. This lesson is how we add, subtract, and multiply polynomials. It's pretty straightforward, pretty easy, and so I think we're going to kind of whiz through this pretty quickly. Hopefully you uh, don't have any troubles, and this helps you out. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add polynomials. And whenever we add or subtract polynomials, the key is to combine like terms, just like I have right here in big, bold, blue letters, okay? Um, so whenever we see an addition or subtraction, we've already done stuff like this. So don't make it any more complex than it really is. When we look at this, we see there's a t squared minus 6t plus 2 plus 5t squared minus t minus 8. Because it's all addition, we can drop those parentheses and combine like terms. So I say, okay, there's a t squared there. There's a 5t squared there. t squared plus 5t squared is 6t squared. Negative 6t negative t, I add those together and I get negative 7t, and then 2 plus negative 8 is negative 6, and that's it. Now there is another way that we could do this, and it'll be a little bit helpful when we do multiplication, um, but we could add these by going vertically, okay, and by doing that it would be something like rewriting the problem, so it's t squared minus 6t plus 2, and then underneath it we would write the second polynomial, 5t squared minus t minus 8. And what this allows us to do is it allows us to group these like terms. Here's the t column, here's the t squared column, here's the constant column. And so I got t squared plus 5t squared, which is again 6t squared, negative 6t minus t, or plus a negative t is negative 7t, and then 2 plus negative 8 is negative 6. So I end up with the same answer either way. It's really just a matter of personal preference. This way allows us a little bit better organization. Okay. Now, when we subtract, whenever we subtract, especially with polynomials like this, I like to change this sign to an addition sign and then change the signs in what we're subtracting. That way we're going to make less mistakes, I believe. Okay. So again, I'm looking here and it was 8d minus 3 plus 9d squared minus d cubed minus 13d minus 4. Well, instead of having minus minuses or minus negatives, I just like making that positive, distributing the negative through there. <clears throat> and now I combine like terms. This is my only d cubed. So I say d cubed there. I have 9d squared and um, no other d squared. So that means plus 9d squared. This should be negative because we added that negative there. And then I got 8D here and 13D here. So that's going to be 8D and 13D, which is 21D. And then finally, negative 3 and positive 4, which is positive 1. Again, this one might have been a little bit easier to do had we written it out in vertical format. Um, but again, that's personal preference, and we'll use the vertical format more when we go on to uh, multiplication. When we multiply, um, we really are going to distribute to all terms. And so when I see here, this is a binomial, because there's two terms, times a trinomial, three terms, um, we're going to distribute the x to everything and then the 2 to everything. So right now it's x plus 2 times 3x squared minus x minus 5. I'm going to distribute this x. I'm going to get th uh, x times 3x squared, which is 3x cubed. I'm going to do x times negative x, which is negative x squared. I'm going to do x times negative 5, which is negative 5x. Now I need to do the same thing, but I'm going to do it with my uh, number 2. And I'm going to say 2 times 3x squared. Well, that's 6x squared. Now notice where I put this 6x squared, right underneath the negative 1x squared. That way it's going to be easier to combine like terms. Then I distribute the 2 to the negative x, giving me negative 2x. And then I distribute the 2 to the negative 5, giving me negative 10. Now I have this vertical alignment, and you can see here's my x cubes terms. So I got 3x cubes. I got negative x squared plus 6x squared, which is plus 5x squared. I have negative 5x plus negative 2x, which is negative 7x. And then nothing plus negative 10, so I just have negative 10. And that's all we did. It's very similar to foiling. It's just a matter of distributing to each term. Now, when we go over here and we have three binomials, a minus 5 times a plus 2 times a plus 6. 
pair them up. You know how to FOIL, so go ahead and multiply these two first. We'll just rewrite the A minus 5 right here and let it chill out front. And then we're going to distribute. A times A is A squared. A times 6 is 6A. Distribute the 2. 2 times A is 2A. And 2 times 6 is 12. Let's simplify this and combine the like terms. So A minus 5 is still just hanging out front. And then we have A squared plus 8A plus 12. So now it's just like the problem we had over here, where it was a binomial times a trinomial. Binomial, trinomial. Distribute the A, so we get A cubed plus 8A squared plus 12A. Then we distribute the negative 5, and we get negative 5A squared, negative 40A, and negative 60. Combine our like terms. Again, it's easy because they're in vertical format. a cubed plus 3a squared minus 28a minus 60. And that is our final answer. Now one last example here and then a couple notes that we need to take care of. x plus or xy minus 4 quantity squared. Now we cannot distribute across multiplication or addition. We talked about this in the last video. Um, we, we can't. We can only do it across multiplication or division, not across addition or subtraction. So because of that subtraction sign, what that really means is that I need to write it out twice. xy minus 4 times xy minus 4. And now, I just simply have a binomial times a binomial. So xy times xy might be a little confused by that, but there's two x's and two y's, and x times x is x squared. y times y is y squared, and so x times y times x times y is x squared times y squared. When I distribute to the negative 4, I get negative 4xy. Don't be scared of the fact that there's an xy in there. Negative 4 times xy is negative 4xy. And negative 4 times negative 4 is a positive 16. Now, combine like terms. Well, this is a like term, x squared, y squared. These two are like terms, negative 4xy and negative 4xy. That's actually going to be negative 8xy. So I'm writing my x squared, y squared, minus 8xy, and then plus 16. And so those are my terms of the final answer. All right? Um, now, when we see things like this, it occurs kind of often, and you're going to get good at doing this as we go through, but if you look here, this is some of the special patterns that we have, um, and I'm not going to make you memorize these. Um, it may be helpful if you do, uh, but for the most part, this is kind of what we're looking at. Um, when you have a difference of squares, if you will, this is the opposite of that. When you have a plus b times a minus b, you get a squared minus b squared. Um, this is actually one of those times when it looks like it's a distribution of the exponents. Um, down here, if you square binomials, kind of like what we just did, they're going to end up being these special patterns. And you can see in the examples here um, that there are special patterns that you can um, see come through there. y plus 3 squared is y squared plus 6y plus 9. The better you get at these, the better off you're going to be, but you're going to get good at them just by doing lots of practice. Same thing with cubing a binomial. You can cube a binomial and we'll get to there. There's actually other patterns that we can go ahead and get to, um, but, but we're going to get to that a little bit later on, and that's the binomial theorem. And finally, one last thing. We talked about this. This is a common error, okay? You cannot distribute exponents across addition and subtraction. Cannot. I repeat, cannot. Do not distribute exponents across addition or subtraction. If you do and you end up with something like this, this is going to be a big mistake, and I see it all the time. So make sure that when you see something like this, x plus 2 squared, do not write it as x squared plus 2 squared or <clears throat> x squared oops, plus 4. It is not that, okay? 
If I had a big red marker, I would draw a line through it. Do not do that, okay? If you have something that is like that, <clears throat> and you have x plus 2 squared, we need to write it just like we did in our last example. x plus 2 times x plus 2 in foil. x times x, x squared. x times 2 is 2x. Two, 2 times x is 2x. And 2 times 2 is 4. So our final answer after we combine like terms is x squared plus 4x plus 4. And that fits the special pattern. So, again, the more you know those special patterns, the better off you're going to be. But don't ever, 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 ever distribute exponents across addition or subtraction. Hope you enjoyed, and uh, thank you very much.